Uh, g'day, guys, and welcome to today's episode of Idol Talking with Nolsey. Today, our guest is one half of the biggest musical act to ever come out of Tasmania, uh, who are releasing a new album, Living the Dream, this week. Uh, as always, I'm joined by show producer Tim Holland. So, Tim, who is our guest today, buddy? We have a great guest, a great friend of both of ours. Uh, Tom Wolf is one half of the Wolf Brothers who Yay! are releasing their sixth album this week, Live in the Dream. Uh, and they are, of course, the greatest ever act, musical act from Tasmania in the history of Tasmania in the history <laughs> of music. Uh, Aria, multiple Aria nominees, uh, multiple Golden Guitar winners, including Album of the Year, uh, a couple of years ago, please welcome to the show, Tom Wolf. Good on you, buddy. Hey, that was quite an intro. <laughs> I reckon there'd be some uh, some musical Tasmanians that wouldn't quite agree with that. But anyway, oh, I don't know, it. mate. On record, it's pretty it's pretty hard to deny, buddy. On uh, on statistics alone, come on. I'll I'll take it. Don't worry. About <laughs> that. No. no, it's good, mate. Thanks for um having me on, boys. And yeah, we are we are both mates, so it's nice to yeah. be um to be doing this together. How you going? Oh, I'm good, buddy. It's good to catch up in some way these days, even if it is over a, uh, a Zoom meeting. That's right. <laughs> or a that's right. Zoom interview. Oh, very good. So, yeah. how have you been? Good. How's the family? Been, been good. Yeah. Been, like my life is um, well, not even organised chaos. It's just chaos. We got two <laughs> girls. Two girls. Evie just turned two. Our youngest just turned six months. We just the albums just come out. We've, my shed is like a delivery centre for Australia <laughs> Post. <laughs> Chaos, but it's great, mate. Honestly, yeah. you know it's busy. It's it's chaotic. We're up at five four every morning with the girls, but you wouldn't change it. It's really good. You just yeah. got to roll with it. So life life life's really good, mate. A different, uh, a bit of a different stage of life now, mate. It uh, all changes once um, the little ones hit the ground, don't, don't, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. And that's the that's the old cliche, you know, like before you have kids, everyone's like, oh, just do it, you know, it'll be the best thing you've ever done, it'll be the best thing you'll ever do. <laughs> and then, like, even when Ali was pregnant with Evie, our first one, I was very excited, obviously, but, yeah, you know, I yeah. wasn't like, because I wasn't obviously growing the baby, even though sometimes in my life it has looked like that, I wasn't <laughs> growing the baby. I don't know, but it's literally as soon as I saw it, it was like, click yeah um, yeah change so i love them mate they're the best yeah. and they um you know that evie's just me in the female form so she's doing things she's singing she's dancing she's oh, running around awesome my it's, it's payback for the life i've lived <laughs> <laughs> you are a doting dad aren't you tom I am. And you know what? It's else is really funny. I was one of them dads that was like, no, nah, not gonna put photos of my kids online, I'm not doing any of that. And now I'm just like, I want to <laughs> I need to show everybody this. Yeah. yeah. So oh, good uh, on you, mate. That's, yeah, that's sensational. It's great, mate. It is a great time in life. Obviously, uh, with our, our three sort of, you know, hitting that that later uh other side of, of teenagers, you know, and or the, towards towards adults sort of thing and having the little bloke come along's been a a real crazy, crazy ride because he's an absolute uh, little terror. But it's it's so good to go back to that stage again. You know what I mean? You yeah. sort of because because a blink, you blink, you blink, and it's over, sort of thing. And and uh, it happens so quick. So to to go back to that time, right back to the start again, it's it's pretty pretty amazing. I was going to say actually because what your three are like nearly adults, aren't they? They'd be yeah, yeah. I'll see at sixteen. Cody's uh, twenty turning twenty two in May, and Blake's twenty one this year. Yeah, right. So. Your young fella's got older fellas to really lead him yeah. astray when he's like 40. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully come oh, and God. pick him up from places that I couldn't be bothered to go to <laughs> when he's a bit older. <laughs> oh, I'm already you gotta worried try and make a <laughs> you got to try and make him work for you, mate, if you can. Down the track. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Come and pick yeah. your brother up. <laughs> yeah, that's great. No, that's how, how great for you guys, though. That's really, really wonderful, mate. Yeah, mate, it is. It's great. Now, buddy, uh, originally Wolf Brothers were a four-piece band, but now you're a duo. Uh, how, how did the band, you know, um, how did the band form? How did you guys form in the first place? Because you came off a big show too, like I did back way back in the day. So yeah. you're sort of reality TV stars originally as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it started off, obviously, it's Wolf Brothers, that's so always been me and Nick, but yeah. the other two guys who originally started with us, Casey Kostuk, Brady Rainbird, I mean, they literally lived up the road. 
You know, like yep. Casey lived up the road, Brody lived down the road. We all caught the school bus together. How so, cool. you know, we started playing music together in the old Picker's huts here on the farm and, you know, we'd be playing everything literally from Slim Dusty through to Metallica, <laughs> to, you know, to no, Lee Kernigan, to Iron Maiden, whatever, you know. It was yep. it was really fun. And then, um, yeah, the, we you know, we were a pub band. We were playing cover gigs every weekend, you know. Me and Nick would go do duo gigs and then we'd do band gigs and we'd do rodeos and BNS balls and and ironically how it ended up being called the Wolf Brothers um a very original name I know but um, <laughs> we we were actually a band called One for the Road for a while and then hey, cool. um, people used to just you'd see people say on Facebook and stuff oh we're going to watch the Wolf Brothers tonight oh we're going to watch the Wolf Boys we're going to watch the Wolf Brothers yeah, right. such yep, and yep. such yeah and we sort of thought that that kind of makes more sense, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Long story short, the the two guys, Brody actually still tours with us. He he, he stepped back as a creative member and as an official member. Yeah. But he loves playing the music, and he's like, "Look, boys, I want to work on my own music, but can I still come and be part of the touring band?" So that's yep. wonderful for us. Yeah, uh, and absolutely. Ca- yeah, like, and he's, uh, they're our best mates still. In case, case step back, sort of, as COVID hit, three kids under ten. A lot of teaching. I think he sort of we tour, we tour a lot, and I think he just sort of got to the point with the touring and went sort of. I think I'm probably burnt out on the touring side of things. But I actually yep. caught up with him for a beer on the weekend at a wedding, and yep. I was feeding him Cascade Lagers. You know, <laughs> you know, it was it was good. It was really yeah. fun. So yeah, we did that, and then yeah, we went on Australia's Got Talent in 2012, which was um, yeah, which which really that was sort of the catalyst that really got yep. us on the road. You know, yeah. Um, it was interesting. I was listening to the podcast with you and Dicko, and I'm pretty sure the producer, the executive producer, was Greg Vanessa. Yeah, yeah, and I'm pretty sure he he was the executive producer when we did Australia's Got Talent. Yep. Yeah. 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 I think he was too. Yeah. 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 Good guy. He, um... Yeah. Great fella. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> really? Like to producer, like so animated. You know what I mean? Like so. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so over the top, but definitely, yeah, definitely good fella. Yeah, well, he's still in the job he's meant to be doing, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. So we did that in 2012. Um, you know, purely this sort of concept was we wanted to go play things like the Gimpy Muster. We wanted to go to Tamworth. We wanted to go to Denny and play all those country festivals that we'd gone to as fans. Yeah. And we'd sort of put applications into play and stuff, pre-management, pre-label, all that stuff. Mm, mm. And they said... Um, Oh well, yeah, it's great, but why would we get a country band from Tassie where we can just get one from here? Yeah, you know. So we sort of thought, well, let's this this show might get us a few doors open, you know. And it we yep. it, we, we like you, we came second. Um, <laughs> come second too. I just had to second. say that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> come first at all the losers. <laughs> yeah, but but I wouldn't have changed it. Wouldn't have changed it. It was an incredible no. experience. And like and to their credit, to Australia's Got Talent credit. I think we did five performances or six performances and we did only one cover. The rest yep. were our original songs. Yeah, that's great. That we already had up on iTunes and, and all that sort of stuff. Like So really amazing response, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. It just opened the doors and I, and I don't even think the show, to be honest, expected us to do as well as we did. Yep. I think yep. our state really got behind us. Tassie really got behind us. Yep. Uh, and I think a lot of people around Australia were kind of refreshed, you know, because it wasn't a story of like, I'm dying. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. My grandfather's dying. As yep. you know, like they've got to yep. make TV, so I'm not yeah, having yeah, a go. I, I get it. But, you know, yep. there was phone calls with me and Nick before the show aired of like, Is so there any story? Farm. We live on a farm. So drought? And we're like, yeah, mate, we live yeah, on. Yeah. yeah. We're in the mountains of Tasmania. They're like, oh, so flooding? We're like, no, look. <laughs> and, and luckily for us, we just sort of said, look, we're, we're four mates, love playing music together. We've got day jobs. We'd love to throw that in and do this. And that was actually yeah. the story they ran with, which was the real genuine story. So I, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. think that's why it actually works so well because I think people yep. could actually see that. We were blokes just having a go. and yep. Yeah. Yeah, so that was that. Was that. And then... Now we're here, six six albums later. Wow, awesome! Lots of 
lines under the eyes, yeah. you know, <laughs> lots of bags. Maybe that's what I didn't know what you were going to say know. then. <laughs> 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 Not that time. <laughs> lots of lines and lots of bags. <laughs> moving on. What are we moving on. Okay. What, what is the, uh, Tom, what is the music scene like in Tasmania, just generally? It's, it's pretty good. Like, it's actually, to be honest, it's probably a lot better now than, say, it was 10 years ago. Um, now there's been a lot of influence of things like we've got the Mona Museum down here, so there's, like, you know, a lot more focus on art and creativity. I'll be honest, it's probably not a huge country scene for the type of contemporary country we play. But to the credit, to the people at the time, they were really trying to embrace us and we'd go do original music nights and little festivals and stuff with these guys and we'd always sort of be the odd one out, you know, but they were really, there was people who really trying to sort of get behind us. But um, it's good, you know. I, we always took the mindset, um, the Beatles always said, you've got to own your hometown before you can own your, you know, own your country and then before you own your country, you got to own your thing. So our mindset was like, We've got to own the hometown, so we've got to get some gigs in Hobart and be the best cover band, and then we've got to own Tassie. We've got to be the best band in yeah. Tassie, and then we can take over yep. Australia. You know? So that was sort of our mindset, and I think the years of gigging and working and playing so many pubs and rodeos and BNS balls really helped when the show hit. So many local people had seen us play and were like, oh, yeah, yeah they, they played at me cousin's engagement party yeah, <laughs> so yeah. there was this big <laughs> swell of people that got behind us you know so yeah um, that's awesome but it, it, tim it's a pretty good pretty good scene pretty good scene yeah. i'd say it's better now you know but that's yeah that's, that's what it is yeah so i mate, you're still on um on the family farm and still still running the family farm as well yeah when, when i can breathe and have time uh, <laughs> this actually this room i'm and talking to you now this is the original farmhouse so this is the original one room shack where it all started and it, um, yeah, they added rooms on by rooms as they had kids. But, yeah, family's been here since 1899. And awesome. Yeah, so what's that? I'm fourth generation and my little girls are fifth and, yeah, still here. I mean, like, at the moment, my life, my priority is the band still because I still think, like, I just, like, it might sound funny, but I feel like we're only just hitting our stride. Yeah, no, I get it for sure. Yep. Like I feel like musically we're we've really we're writing our best stuff. I think we're doing the best shows we've done. And I don't know, maybe it's that's just age and experience and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. The farm's still here. My uncle's still here. He's seventy six, and he keeps things ticking over. And I do what I can. And his son Gav helps. Um, but we're still here. We're still going. We're we're ticking away. And um, I think maybe the maybe in the next ten years when the band well the band may not settle down, but <laughs> um, I'd like to maybe focus a little bit more back on the farm, but we're still here, mate. So it's um, yep. it's pretty it's pretty special to have that history because not a lot of people have have that at all, you know. No, no, mate, because I've been there too. I, obviously, um, I, we I went over uh, and and we did it. What was it? Two two days that we were there for? I yeah, think. yeah. And we wrote yeah, we wrote did. a song and and. And drank, drank a bit. A long, <laughs> long moonshine. Yeah, yeah, drank a bit of moonshine. But then we uh, we went up to the mountains too. That was that was crazy because obviously being a mainlander, it's not as bloody cold as uh, I'm not used oh, to yeah, cold we, as it was down there. <laughs> it was you snowing. got the full experience. We went up the Tassie Highlands and yeah, went right up great. the Lake Country, and then we yep. uh, had a day on the farm. And yeah, I thought we awesome. wrote we wrote a pretty good song, but anyway, you didn't cut it. But anyway, you can't win a ball. <laughs> <laughs> My day. The one I just released, mate, was cut a few years before that, so don't worry about that. Yeah. There's still time. No, that's, <laughs> that's what it's like, isn't it, sometimes? Yeah. like we, We've just put out the new album, Even the Dream, and there's literally songs on that we've been sitting around for like four years. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they've almost made the last album and the album before that, but they just were never quite right for where we were, you know? So that yeah. I guess that, that's what kind of happens sometimes. Yeah, I definitely think so. You know, you might write a song that that sort of might be suited to to two albums down the track, maybe. You know what I mean? But it's sort of always great to keep them there and having having them uh, up your sleeve just in case. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, and I think you know, as you would know, like we're pro we're very different people now to to the album we last made. Where the last album yeah. we made, we really wanted to, you know, push ourselves, do different things. You know, we had like we went a bit more pop. We had like synth influences. Like I don't know. Yeah. I feel like we watched 
way too much Stranger Things and then, like, we tried to make it. <laughs> um, yeah. That was Kids on Cassette. Yeah. And then this album, it was kind of like, cool, okay, well, we've done that. Let's just get back to what we love and do. And, and There's more cowboy in the yeah, parts. <laughs> Or we'll just make a good country rock record, you know, like with a band. Yeah. And I think we're also pretty excited to be back working together. I mean, like, it's so wonderful we can do what we're doing right now over Zoom and, and all that yep. stuff. And that's how we did a lot of the last record. And it was like, cool, I want to be in a room face-to-face -face with someone creating a bit yep. of vibe, you know. So yep. um, so that's what we did. That's what we did. Yeah, uh, awesome. In uh, In the music business... When someone puts out an album, they always say it's the best album they've ever made. So I why know. is Living the Dream the best album you guys have ever made, Tom Wolf? <laughs> I know. And, <laughs> and I say it and I think, I sound like a cliche. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's because other things I touched on before, like like age and experience and all that stuff. Like I go back and listen to our earlier albums and I think there's some really good stuff on them. But then I also hear stuff I'm like, yeah, we we're just little we we're kids. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. we hadn't had the life experience. You hadn't had maybe so many of the ups and downs. Like, you know, we've lost our parents and yeah. I've got kids now. And I really think that that sort of maybe changes your perception of writing and what you want to say and what you want to put on an album. And um, someone said to me the other day, I said, I really like the new album. He says, you're a bit soppy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, I don't know if it's soppy, but I think, you know, like, Maybe we just, uh, I, I don't know, maybe like lost our parents and all that stuff. It's yeah, not so yeah, much yeah. sad. I think we're just, you More think about life of, and your own yeah, mortality yeah. And, yep. and I think that sort of all comes out in the writing, you know. So, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, Tim, I think it's really good. And I think, honestly, I think it's probably some of the best production and sound we've we've re we've recorded. We went and recorded this with Rod McCormack and Rod McCormack, yep. for people who don't know, has played on every Australian country record <laughs> for the last forever. Um, him and his brother Jeff are just incredible musicians. Uh, Rod's married to Jenna Jeffries, uh, but well, he's got an incredible studio. And, and Nick and Rod co-produced this, and it was really cool. We were all there working together, and he just – he literally worked from 6 a.m. till midnight – we actually, yeah. I, I contracted COVID, so we all got COVID, so we locked down the studio together, <laughs> and we, um, just, I slept in the vocal booth, Nick slept in the drum room, and we just literally worked for two or three weeks um, with COVID, and he literally worked 18 hours a day. It was incredible. So incredible you, where, do where was that done, mate? Because so, I, I, you were going overseas. I know everybody's plans over the last couple of years have been totally thrown out the window just about, but um, you did all this in Australia? We did all this in Australia, yeah, yeah. Um, and this was done at Rod's studio at uh, Central Coast called, Tim, you may have to help me. Uh, it's a lovely sound... studio. I've been there as well, but I couldn't tell you what the name of it is. <laughs> <laughs> so many records have been recorded there and I'm having a middle black. Anyway, it's incredible space. Um, yeah. But yeah. we did it all here. And then actually our, our live drummer now, Dave Roberto, he recorded all the drums. Um He's an incredible session music, though. So it was really cool. It was, it was a really good sort of family orientated vibe, you know. It was actually it was yeah. really good because the first few days before I came down with COVID and we had to isolate, Gina was rocking up at like four o'clock in the afternoon and she'd have, have a cheese platter and a bottle of wine. And I'm like, geez, this oh, is beautiful. all right, isn't it? This is good. <laughs> Didn't get used to this. Yeah. And then that, <laughs> that all stopped, unfortunately. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Like, I, I think it really. I love the love the sounds of it. You know, I really love the sound yeah. of it. It's just a good yeah. country country rock record, which is what we that, what we do. Yeah, yeah. So I had this in um, uh, yesterday on a tour. It sounds there's a lot more. So it feels a little bit of a tribute to the uh, to the to the strong women. Um, there's a couple of songs in there that yeah. um, that have that bit of a message, I think, and probably that that probably comes back to I suppose losing your mum and that as well. Which yeah, so absolutely. Fun. Like here's to the ones. Definitely yep. a tip of the hat to her. Um, yep. And I, and and ironically that that was written before she died. But the the yeah. reason that was written was because we did the country heart album two albums ago, and we'd lost dad, and there was a big sort of focus yeah. about the farm and dad and how that's all going. And we sort of got to a point where geez, you know we talk about that old man a lot, but really we'd be nothing. Yeah, <laughs> we'd be oh, nothing no, without yeah. mum. 
you know. Yeah, so that yeah. was sort of the that was sort of the thought behind that and our wives. And I mean now, particularly, you know, I'm going on the road and then like Ali's at home with like two kids and it's like yep. absolute chaos. And I'm just like See in a couple of weeks, okay. <laughs> so, no, mate, I've been there, done that. Don't oh, worry, yeah. I know exactly what's going on there for sure. Yeah. So, so yeah, <laughs> I think, I think, I think that Tim, even going back to your question as well, I think all that stuff, that life stuff, has probably come out a bit more. You know, yeah, come out a bit more in this album. Like our first album, it's on. That song, it's on, was just about driving to the pub to do a gig and drink and party. At, you know, on a Friday yeah. night. I mean, except, except for one song. Except Girl for one song, memory, which is a heartbreak song. I still song. think is one of the best songs you guys have ever recorded. <laughs> yeah. And in fact, if that song wasn't on the album, it'd probably be a pretty <laughs> terrible album. <laughs> no, that, that's unfair. The hit songs and all that are great. Yeah, no, too, I they're great fun. But that oh, song I, I think really Empty Pockets song. is a great song. I love that one. Put it And put the house on it's cool too, because I suppose Nick just bought a place, didn't he? Yeah, so Nick um, got a place up north. So um, he's a northerner now. So he drinks Bogues. I drink Cascade. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he he. It's really exciting. So him and his wife Tani, they that put the house on its songs, kind of about yeah. that journey. Because yeah, trying yeah. to buy their little, they want to buy a little piece of land where they could. Tani's got a couple of horses, you know. They've got the dogs. Nick mm-hmm. wants to. Nick's just got a bunch of sheep, you know. You know, yep. you know all the stuff. You Absolutely, want to do. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. No, which, I know you're you're now doing. Now you've got yeah. your place again. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, so I think there's the whole. They nearly bought a place, and then they've dealt with. They were dealing with real estate agents who were just absolute. I won't say the words. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You it's know all, all that stuff. So I think yeah, but like they, they've they found a beautiful place just outside of Lonnie and um, beautiful land. He's got a bought the house and he, he the the little farm with it, and he got um. They, he bought this old Russian Belarus tractor with it as well. <laughs> yeah, so he's out there slashing and doing fencing. And, yeah, so he's, he's oh, that's great. Actually, to Nick's credit, I think he's he really. It's like he's found his place. Yeah, does content. that make sense? Content. Yeah, really. Yeah, happy. very content. And you know, um, as far as a carpenter, I love it. He rings me. He rings me up most days. He's like, hey mate, he's like, so no, I'm just. I'm gonna pull out this wardrobe, and I'm gonna do this. No, like, yeah, no, you need this timber, and you need these screws, and so that's yeah. great. So it's yeah. not. I think it's good to be able to do that stuff, you know. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, hundred percent, mate. And having something that's your own too, that that every little bit you put into it, you can see building, you know, building the the final product, what you what you hope it will be, you know, down the track a bit. So instead of sort of you know mowing the lawn on some place who, who you're renting, <laughs> absolutely. Sort of absol- Absolutely, like it's the Aussie dream, isn't it? You know, have yeah. a bit of a land and so. How far away is he now? He, he's here. like about two and a half hours from me. Oh, that's not too bad. No, that's all. well for Tasmanian stands. That that's a long way, but for, <laughs> for you yeah, mainlanders, yeah. that's just driving <clears throat> to the shops and back. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's, he's it's great, mate. And look, Nick's actually got his first thing he did is he turned one of the rooms into a little studio and stuff like that, and mm. he's recording and. Yep. Um, I think that's where Nick will end up doing a lot more producing and, and stuff yeah. like that. He really, really enjoys that world. And he's and he's actually really he's really good at it. He's very he is, good at yeah, it. absolutely. Well he yeah. plays nearly everything and and that always helps, you know what I mean, in that in that situation for sure. Uh, you know, I think some people just got that m- real musical brain, you know, and I think that's why me and Nick have always worked because Nick's kind of the introvert and, and I'm just out here being <laughs> Me and an extrovert and running around on stage. On the flag. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, entertaining, mate. Entertaining. Yeah, but the, the, that's the, what it's called. It's all it's about the, the yin and yang. The yin and yang. It's the, Absolutely. It's so, is there anything you two ever fight about or anything like that? Because I know my brothers and I are very protective of each other, but we can. Uh, we can have a go at each other, but no, no one else is allowed to. Yeah, <laughs> I'd, I'd agree with that. Yeah, yeah, I definitely <laughs> agree with that. We can get stuck into each other about things. No, honestly, we're pretty good. And I think maybe in particular with mum passing, it's even yeah. brought us tighter um, yeah. because you've really got a choice. You can either be a blabbering mess and not deal with it or you can man up and yeah. deal with it, you know, and deal yeah, with it. It's not going stuff. away, is it? Yeah, yeah so that, that's, that's sort of brought us close together. The things we'll argue about are, a little things, you yep. know, like, yeah, like, or, or what's going to be the next single? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That's cool. like he's always like that. I hate this song. I hate it. I hate it. And it's I'm like, mate, it's the best song we've ever recorded. <laughs> for example, like um, for example, ain't seen it yet, which is like one that got a song of the year, and I think was a real turning point in our career for country hard album. Like recording that, and we're like, oh, me and Brody are like, wow, this is okay. This is we've got with something special. Things mm. like that. No, no, can't, can't we can't release it? <laughs> uh, 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 but you know, that's that's what it is. So he would say the same thing about me. We got yeah, probably been in a van with me for four hours. You know. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm hearing you, mate. All good. Hey, so uh, obviously, you know, you, you love every track on the album. Which, which one's your favourite off the new Living the, uh, Living the Dream album, mate? I would say um, the ones you just talked about, Empty Pockets. I really love the lyric. Of Empty yeah, Pockets. Great, great, Again, story. I, great story. You know, it's, it's, and I think a bloke on I said, oh, it's a bit soppy. I, and I think he was referring to that song because it's not so much soppy. I think it's just, Again, question your own sort of mortality and sort of thinking about life and, and yeah. trying to say, well, we've only got one shot at it. You might as well live it properly, yeah, you know? absolutely. Um, I think that's really special. I really love the groove and feel of All In Good Time. Um, yep. It's, I'm a big Stones fan. It's very yep. Stones. we got Laurie Minson to come play a lot of harmonica on that, and Laurie's played on everything from Barnsley to Kernigan to probably been on some – some of your records, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, Laurie's, yeah. Laurie's been on everything. There so, is a lot of harmonica in there, yeah, yeah. I don't know, and I think that was that was definitely my choice. We wanted to get back to that bit more, I guess, doing a bit more synth stuff in that last time. I, I, I guess I want the term I want to use is a bit more natural, yeah, instrument sound. So getting things like harp, uh, and the other one I really think is quite special is New Dogs' um, Old Tricks, which is a song we wrote with, with Travis Collins, which was sort of a tribute to. They're dogs, you know, they're best mates, you know, and um, you know, growing up farms and yeah, absolutely, they become your best friend, you know, absolutely. And, um, and I don't know, you're probably like me, like the only time I ever really saw my old man cry was when the dog died, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, things yeah, like yeah. things like that, you know, yeah, so, my um, yeah, my old man ran over one of ours one day, just accidentally, it, it went run across the wolf up some cattle in front, oh. and he had the had the fuel trailer on, and he he just it was a one of my brother's girlfriend's dogs, and it was like just this, uh, this uh, board, loof, loofy border collie, you know what I mean? And it was four yeah. years old before Adam decided to train it, and it turned out to be one of the best sheep dogs we ever had. And, mm. and I was there with him. I was only a young bloke, and, oh, it was horrible. He was going to sell the farm that day, and he, he, you know, I could just absolutely destroyed him, you know, running over this dog. It was just bloody horrendous. I'll, I'll never forget it until yeah. one of those things that you can't unsee, you know what I mean? Oh, no, I'm with you. I remember when our old lab died here. Because we don't have, we're berry, so we don't have sheep or cattle dogs. Yeah, but yeah. The old man was, I think I think he cried more than when his own mother died, you know. He was <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's interesting, interesting. But, it, it's, look, I think it's a real tribute to those those dogs and we can now finally say we're a real country band because we've written a song about a dog. So <laughs> maybe we just need to get one about some trains and then, yeah, we're, yeah. then we're there. <laughs> and then we're there. So, yeah. Uh, no, oh, mate, it's good. It feels it feels really good to have it out. And it's ironic, yeah. you know, been out like a couple of days or whatever, or a week or whatever. Yeah. And then he's like, great, okay, so what are we going to do next? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, absolutely. He's still going to promote and sell this thing. But, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's really cool that, like, we're constantly thinking, like, what are we going to do next? And I think that comes back to what I said before. Like, I feel like we're only just getting into it, hitting our stride and yeah, starting to find our creative thing because we just want – to write more, record more, like I, I feel like, yep. yeah. yeah, hungry again. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a great way to be too, uh, especially after because you guys, have, it's, you know, it's a, people don't realise just the fact that you live in Tassie is just that extra bit of travel to get home, and you know, and it's sometimes it's an extra day, other times it's you know it's sort of longer than that. To just just when everyone's already already home and you're still just still trying to get home. Uh, which, which can burn you out, you know what I mean? So it's, to to be hungry again like that is 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 a great thing to happen because, you know, once you get burned out in that situation, it's really hard to recover from. Uh, I, I, I'd say um, for me, you know, like some – because we obviously been a country band, like we'll often be out west in Queensland or, yeah. you know, somewhere where it's like four flights and it's like a day to get there. Yeah. And pre-COVID, probably didn't realise it, but I was very burnt out. Like yeah, yeah. Sundays, yeah. like I'd be I'd do a gig 
Friday, Saturday, and I mightn't get home till Monday night. Yeah, you know, makes it hard. So and hard. then like I'm off again on Thursday, and so much travel. And yep, yeah, it was interesting. Like first, it took me like first three months of COVID. Like I know I knew how bad it was, but I was kind of like, oh, this is nice. I'm going to fix that today. <laughs> oh, I'm going to yeah. do that. You know, like I yeah. did all that stuff I wanted yeah. to do. It. And then after about six months, I was like, okay, let's let's yeah, go. let's get back to work. Let's, yeah, let's no. Go. I thought but, the same thing during that time. It was going like, because for the first time in nearly 20 years, you, you sort of, or 18 years, you sort of, uh, you know, you got, you, you're home for a good amount of time, which is really, really rare, and, and you're sort of not used to it, you know? Hey, um, I'll, actually, I want to ask you a question, because when you were came off Idol, to, mm-hmm. touring in Australia is a lot different now than what it would have been yeah. 20 years ago, just because of internet and everything. Yeah. When you went on Idol, because like touring now, I I yep. can go on a Friday or a Thursday or a Friday and come yep, back yep. on a Sunday. It's sort of yeah weekend stuff. So which yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. works for us because I'll get a couple of days with kids and yep, you know yep. etc cetera, etc. Cetera. But I'm assuming when you would have been back then, you would have probably gone for six weeks at a time. Yeah, yeah, we did, mate. It was really it was really a strange time actually because touring in the country at that time was was pretty pretty. Um, really tough you know there wasn't a great touring scene at the time and it really it really fallen off uh for for one reason or another i'm not quite sure but i think just the general uh sort of fa- uh, the, uh watching public of the show you know the, uh, yeah. everyone you know the book and ages and that decided so we we're doing six nights six nights a week and having yeah. having a month like a monday off so you just like i remember we did 40 43 shows in 48 days that's that's it was just crazy. I didn't even know what town I was. You know, sometimes nah. I had to. We'd just roll into town, and because then you go straight to soundcheck. Because a lot of the shows, uh, the gigs, um, thankfully because of the show, would sell out. So they all thought it was a good idea to put a matinee show on. So I was doing sometimes two shows a night um, for for the, for the most of the week. So we do. You know, I think the first tour we did was eleven shows in in. Uh, Fourteen shows in eleven days was the first was the first run from Cairns down to down to Brisbane. It See, was just that's, with, that's with one day lot. off. That's yeah, a it was lot. crazy. I mean, it's a totally lot. unsustainable, you know. I think. I mean, but typical of the you know the the oh the management booking side of things, they were just looking at the uh, the ticket sales and going like, well, we Money. can make we can sell two shows out a night. There's no, no not one concern about if. We could make it that far, or we could make yeah. it through it, or we could survive it. You know, it was just about if they're going to buy the tickets, put them on sale. You know, yeah, crazy. Yeah, see, so that's 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 a lot of work. Because yeah. I mean, like I've watched you watch you perform. It's not like you're sitting down in a stool. Just... <laughs> no, when we we, we in, sort of yeah, yeah, you're feeling it after. That's for sure, absolutely. Yeah, and then I'm kind of like. I'm you the guys are the same, but it's, it's entertainment. You know, you put on a show and you get into it. And I think the most important thing in in the whole live show thing is to is if you're enjoying yourself or look like you're enjoying yourself, the crowd will sort of just naturally enjoy themselves. You know, they, what, they what, can't they can't help but get into it if if you if you're into it. You know what I mean? What, one thousand percent. And like I guess my mindset, even at times, may not be the healthiest thing, but I'm kind of like I, I need to do it. One hundred and ten percent. I need to give everything yep. I got. I need to yep. sick my guts out. I need to mm-hmm. run. I need to play my guts. Out. That's kind of been my mindset for yeah, mine too. Yeah, yeah. But for yep. gigs, and I feel like, as you would know, when it clicks, and when then ones yep. click, and it's all connect, everyone connects it's in the moment. It's magic. It is. It, that's why you do it. That is yeah. why you do it. Like yeah. that's the best feeling. Yeah, because like, your show is great too. I, I I really appreciate the opportunity to get to watch you guys like I have over the years. It's it's really energetic and, and electric. You know what I mean? And and the, and the shows are much more like a, a whole different add on to to what you're listening to. You know what I mean? With the performance side of things, because I I sort of you know it, it, it annoys me when people don't try or don't put into the show. You know what I mean? To, because I mean you're there, to, you're getting paid to do a job, and and you. And people want to see a show, and and it's all about repeat customers too. You know what I mean? If if they see a great show and they like it, then hopefully they'll come around next time. But well, um, friend, you, you'd have that loyal fan base that have been with you since the start. As as yep. do we? Like there's Wolf yeah. Brothers fans that are like, "This is my thirty fifth show." <laughs> How good is it? It's awesome. Travelled from Queensland. You're like, wow. You know, so like, yeah, yeah. yeah. You really try and give your best. It's amazing. I think especially in this country, a repeat 
customers, you know, yeah, trying to keep absolutely. it fresh and original yep. and yep. um yeah, yeah, it's really cool. It, it, there is nothing worse when you like you see it you fall in love with an artist or you hear a song or something. Yeah, and you're like, yeah. Hell yeah, I really want to see them. And then you go see them and you're just like, oh underwhelming. It's nothing it's worse, is it? So underwhelming. Like it just, yeah. just it just ruins it ruins it for me. Yeah, no, me too. The Thirsty Mook Boys put on a great show too. I've still got aspirations of well, us three doing a, a, show, a, a, a festival together. I reckon that'd be the guy. You, I reckon you, guy, you guys, us and Thirsty Mook, I reckon we, the rock. We did um, the Longley with Merck and it like sold out. Yep. This was actually during COVID, so we did an acoustic, but this would sold out in like a day. Yeah. And and I've got to tell you, we, Ray, well, they all are. They're all such incredible musicians. But yeah, they are, Ray, yeah. We, did, we got up at the end and did Rip Rip Woodship with them. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and Ray's playing the piano. And, and just the way he was playing, it was the most, like, musical Diverse, man yeah. I've yeah. ever seen. I was just like, wow, you are so good at this. Like, And it's nice, too, with those guys, like, just good blokes too. Yeah, they're great fellas. Yeah, we, I remember we uh, we did. I think it was a relaunch of the Hard Rock Cafe in Brisbane, and and we and we're only a trio. And um, they they did the they went on before us. And they were full band, and it was just it just clicked for the boys. They just nailed it. Who like programmed that? Was, hey, who programmed that? I don't know <laughs> whose fault that was. <laughs> no, but it was pretty hard going on because they were coming off to on. Now that's how you do a show. Like that was that was so vibe because it, yeah. just, it just really clicked, and I'm sort of going. Oh, talk about being thrown one. under a bus! Yeah, oh. Absolutely, oh, we had to go out and uh, and try and uh, try and G'day. put up something after they follow that. Yeah. So we're going. I think they were, they were in their minds. They were going. Good luck following that. Yeah. <laughs> so. You know, um, it, it's funny. I used to let that type of thing really kind of bother me. Like, yeah. like, like if someone went on before us, and maybe especially in the earlier days, because we were, you know, as everything does, you have management, yeah. and label, and everyone's sort of yeah. hyping you, yeah, and you're being hyped and maybe we'll every now and then build a little higher than probably maybe where we should have been. And then someone yeah. would go on and kill it before us. And I'd be backstage going like, <laughs> I'd be like having an aneurysm. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, I would yeah. just be so stressed about it. But um, yeah. Yeah. I love it, that. I love that part of it though. Like, like uh, whenever I'm on a bill with, with other acts, like a festival of some type like that, I'm always going, you know, you just, it's that, it's that healthy competition. Yeah. You know? And you, you really want to bring your A game and, and it sort of fires me up a lot of times um, when I'm in, a bit, in, in, in it backed into a corner a little bit sometimes. I remember I think uh, I did a, a tour with Brian Adams and I, I won, I was male artist of the year for MTV Awards the night before and I got to bed at about half past three in the morning <laughs> and we uh, we had to fly straight to Brisbane and do the show uh, at the Brisbane, I think it's Entertainment Centre, one of the big one of the big centres up there. And uh, I remember starting to the boys going to the band, just going like, "Guys, I'm in trouble. I'm hungover as buggery. You got to, you got to help. You got to really put in this time and sort of carry me a bit." And to the point where they all started to worry a little bit. And then, as it turned out, I must have talked myself into it because I, I ended up doing a really, really great show and came off. And they're going, "You yeah, prick, you lying to us." Yeah. <laughs> and I said, "No, it only just happened. I was really panicking there for a while. I thought I was in in real trouble." As it turned it, out, it was great. Isn't there something? There is something in that though that happens every now and then. Like, um, I don't know. We we do a real thing where like we we. I'll tell you this because you'll laugh, but yeah, it, we try not to expect it to be the never expect it to be the biggest thing in the world. No, if that, you know. I think sometimes you can go out and do a gig and be like, "We're going to kill them this year." Yeah, 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 yeah. And you go out, and then if it's not what your expectations are, you're like, you're not playing well. You're not in a good zone. Yeah. So we went out and did a bunch of shows last year on the tour and played at Parks and we played at Dubbo. And the rooms were kind of like a half full. Yep. And there was the Parks room in particular was like a really big room. And we were like, nah, nah. Let's just go out there, play well, good energy. And then so ever since that weekend, we call it the Park. Uh, the con That concept of not over-expecting is called the Parks yeah. Dubbo concept. <laughs> so, like, we just we just did CMC Rocks and, you know, there's, like, 23,000 people and we're, like, yeah. working on the show and video production, brought in more crew. We really wanted to just go out there and go, we're as good as any of these internationals, yep. da 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 Mm -hmm. And just before we're walking on stage to that, we're going, boys, Park Stubbo, Park Stubbo. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny. Sometimes I try, oh, we don't intentionally try, but it feels like you need to sabotage soundcheck. 
If it sounds, it sounds like it's too good. You always want yeah, oh, the yeah. show is going to be shit. So yeah, oh, I know. Like, yeah, no, yeah. it was a great sound check. No, it wasn't. It was a great yeah. sound check. <laughs> don't What's going to go wrong jinx. tonight? Yeah, no. Nah. Oh, I love it. But oh, you love it, though. Like, I just, yeah. I, I love it. I love all yeah. those situations. And yeah. and um, I think we're very lucky at the moment. The, the band and the boys we've got, we've got me, Nick, obviously, Brody, who's been with us since the start, Scott yeah. Target, Keys, Harp, whatever instrument we give him, really. And yep. Dave Roberto on drums. It's such a great family orientated environment in yep. the band at the moment. Really supportive. Like I, I feel like, yeah, the band's the best it's been, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really. Yep. And that that as you know, when you got good support behind you to allow you to perform and do your thing. Yeah. It's it, it, yeah, it becomes better than the best job in the world. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It really absolutely. does. So, yeah. mate, you you toured a lot with uh, with Lee Kernigan as well. So, speaking of double shows, because these guys would, would pay your spot on the bill and then be his band, wouldn't you? Yeah. So, That's so that all too. started. That started with the show because he was at a point in his career, I think, with the band he had, and they'd been together mm-hmm. for about eighteen years. I think it would just it was kind of done. It ran its yep. course. Yep. He was really looking to sort of. You know, re energize, yeah, yeah re energize, yeah, rejuvenate, with you guys. change, yeah. his, change it. Or well, you were involved a bit, Tim. Yeah, I, I remember Lee. Lee was uh, there was nothing against the the people who were in his band previously, no. but he was feeling a bit stale. He needed mm-hmm. some energy, and you young blokes came along and it changed him. You know, and yeah, give a real shot now. His, his show became a bigger and better show through the enthusiasm and energy alone that you guys you know, brought to him. I, yeah, I think awesome. it, it, it was incredible. It was meant to be like a couple of years and we ended up doing a decade <laughs> together, <laughs> which is incredible. But, I mean, we did yeah. we did some amazing stuff. But, I mean, we, we owe him a lot of credit because we would go out and we learned a lot on those shows because the type of act, size act Lee is, you, you, yeah. you're not on, the, on his tours, you're, you're kind of in theatres. Yeah. Yeah. Playing it, I think anyone anyone can play Venus Ball or Rodeo or a big sort of rowdy crowd and get them going. Mm-hmm. But to play a theatre and play your high energy songs but still captivate them is that, yeah, that yeah, ta- yeah. takes a bit of takes a bit of work. And I remember when we first started doing that, we were like, "Oh my god, we are such fish out of water here." Um, yeah, but it was really really good for us, you know. And I mean, we 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 took on a lot of fans. Yeah, of yeah. Leaf ends that became our fans, and oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, we just we just learned a lot from him, you know. It look, we'd probably still be doing it, but it just got to the point where we're so busy doing our thing, we yeah. can't be. No, no, it's in, a big ask, but we can't well. be in two two places at once. I mean, he always yeah. he went above and beyond looking after us, you know. Whatever we, you know, incredible to us, you know. And um, it was sad. We did the last. We finished up in Tassie. Yep. And um, oh, it was really, it was a lot more emotional than I think all of us sort of expected, you know, because like, yeah. we've been such a great team and we've had so much fun and gone through a lot together. And then, yeah, we finished up. And I was like, we were crying and Bro- <laughs> Brody was really crying. He was really upset. And yeah. he set me off. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, what I liked a lot about it and what me and Nick really learnt from it, though, is like, I mean, because he's got the songs. Yeah, well, he's he's at that level, mate. You know, he can take so much of that to to try and you know to help you on your way to to try and reach those reach those heights. One hundred percent. What I'd like is you know he's got the songs, he's got he's got the career, he's got the awards. Yeah, but he was always trying to make it better. Yeah, you know, there was yep. never anything with the gigs that was never anything that was sort of half asked. No, he's no, never no, like, sure. should be right. It always be like. Oh. What can we do to the set? What can we do to the set that fixes this and makes this better? How can mm-hmm. we make this tighter? Can yep. we do this song? Can we try, you know? So yep. I really enjoyed that because you'd never just go out there and, oh, let's just get her over with. Let's get her done. Yeah, never, yeah, that, yeah. never that mindset. Yep. And I think that's that's why he's obviously had the career and um, yeah. career and success he's had is because of that, you know? So yeah. that was really that was really cool to see that and, and sort of be around that and, um yeah, I mean, we might look. I would love to do it again, like, but not maybe sixty shows in a year type of thing. But maybe like yeah. get together in a couple of years and do a 
damn good mates reunion tour and do yep you know a few party shows where we'd be yep. banned again and and yeah, I reckon there's a pretty good think, chance that's going to happen. I reckon that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. I reckon it'd yeah, be a absolutely. lot of fun. You know, yeah, so yeah. um yeah, yeah, oh, but we love him. He's he's the best. When we um <laughs> when we left he's like mate, I'm sending this down to president and he um he's like you going he's like it's fragile you're going to have to um go pick it up from the courier place. I'm like yeah. And I picked up this box and it was like the size of like a guitar case. And he'd sent like, uh, it was like a four litre bottle of Jack Daniels. <laughs> like, it's like that big. It's like my body. So I've got, that right. in the, I've got that in the shed and I haven't opened it yet, but yeah, it's in this big frame <laughs> and you're like, you've got this handle and pour it over. So yeah. That's great. Really cool. Really cool. I said, I'll have to crack that one day at some point. But yeah. <laughs> yeah you want to have a few people around, mate. It could do some damage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. Are you missing oh, his lifetime great. supply of Fireball? Yeah, well, look, I'll be honest. The people at Fireball are pretty bloody good to us. They actually look. They sent, they sent me this the other day. They, sent, they said I was sending out a box, so they sent me a box of ten pack of little ones and some t-shirts. And I'd they're going to have to get a contact but, from you. I'm trying to get uh, them to sponsor Southbound XO, which I sure. think you would agree would be an appropriate arrangement yes. for all yeah, of yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 That's, that's uh, right. I, I need a contact, so I'll, I'll, I'll speak to you separately. <laughs> yeah, no, no worries. They, look, they're, they're great, actually. They're, they've been great. I mean, yeah, they've been good. They've sent me some stuff over the years, too. They're, they're a good bunch. It, it's ironic. When we first had it, you couldn't get it in Australia. I remember having it in Nashville when we first went there in, like, 2013. Yep. It was actually Tim Daly from CMC's, like, should get a you buy me a fire, buy me and you a fireball and I actually thought he was like pranking me. Yeah, I didn't yeah, yeah. No, that was a drink. I was like, is he gonna like? Yeah. I didn't know. I was like, what's he doing? And anyway, they had it. I was like, oh right. And then we bought some home, and here we are. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so Tim Daly got uh, fireball going in Australia, basically. <laughs> yeah. Well, we bought a couple of bottles home, and then we were like, took it. We went. We come straight home from Nashville and got on a Kernigan tour. We're like, okay, check this out, buddy. Let's go this. And he's like, oh, yeah. and then we were just, that was it, every night. <laughs> That's great. So, yeah, really cool. Really, really cool. So, mate, um, you, you did, you signed out of, signed with BMG in, in, out of Nashville, didn't you? But just before COVID, what, what sort of, yeah. uh, is there any plans to go out of there in the future or, or, or like, what's the future like for you guys? Yeah. So, talk about timing. We, um, we, uh, Working on this deal, you know, we've been going to to and from the states a lot. Um, we'd li- had lived in Nashville. We'd go over and live there for three or four months, write and record. Come back to Australia a few months. We'd go back. We did we did some touring through the Midwest. We did like a mm-hmm. bunch of like county fair shows and festivals and bunch of stuff. We opened for like Eli Young Band and Dustin Lynch and um, did some really cool stuff. Um, and it was, you know, it's all momentum. It was all sort of happening and. 2020, start of 2020, we signed the deal. We're like, wicked. Gore Bamford in Canada. We've been to Canada. We played Calgary Stampede. We worked on getting the team there involved. They're excited. Gore's like, confirmed 35 shows of the tour. You boys are on 35 shows, opening it every night. You know, 1,500, 5,000 people, depending on the area, like, wicked, great, yeah. on the ground. We come to America. We've been in the meetings in the America. It's like we're gonna do this and we'll do promo and we're like wicked and then the world just shut down. Yeah. Twenty twenty for us, we had four months of festivals in Australia, thirty five dates in Canada. We we're going to America for two months. It was all it was all happening, yeah. you know, and then yeah. um it yeah. shut down and it was look, it was pretty rough at yeah, <laughs> the absolutely. time. H- hindsight, I think I was pretty um it messed me up a bit because I think I'd sort of made this my main focus for 10 years. And then it was like, yeah, what are we like? What have I done? Like I've worked for 10 years at something I'm maybe not ever going to be able to do again, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, look, I mean, our goal is probably not to once upon a time, our goal was to probably go and live in America. Yeah. I'm Cause I think you, if you yeah. really want to conquer that scene, you got to be, you got to be over there. Yeah. Yep. Um, and do that. That's, that's probably not our, goal now not saying it's off the table but 
I don't know. I, I love it here. I love living yeah. here. I, I I really want my girls to go to school here. I don't. I'm not totally into the idea of them having an American accent. No disrespect to any American fans. Love this. Yeah, <laughs> appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. But you know, like probably they would too. They probably wouldn't want their girls to grow up talking like me, mate. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd yeah, like yeah. I'd like them to go to school here. Um, and yeah. So our sort of goal now will be we the Canada stuff's going to happen. We're gonna got some stuff. Uh, we just released a song on the new album one with the Shires in the UK. Yeah, the Shires. I was gonna say that. Yeah, yep. That's so we're gonna try uh, and get to get some stuff in the UK, get yep. some stuff in Canada, and we're gonna try and get back on some of these fairs in the in the in the states. I, ideal world, ideal world. What we'd love, I'd love it if we could go to Canada once every eighteen months, do a month yep. or two. Same yep. with the UK. Same with the states. Go over, do some writing, do some recording, whatever we're doing, do some business. While we're there, go out and open a bunch of shows for some label mates, some et cetera, et cetera. You know, yep. so that's that's yep. sort of what we've been working on. But it's, it's honestly taken probably till now to just. I feel like the world's kind of bit normal again. You know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So there's, there's everyone's biggest... been playing catch up, catch up, catch yeah, up, yeah. doing this, and it's like, okay, I think we're now finally sort of normal. So, so that's our goal. But man, I mean, we're we're Aussie boys. I think the songs come from here. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think you know, I think the music from here is inspired from here. I, I really like, like. I love Australia. I don't. I love touring Australia. You know, I might. Yeah, it might be the biggest scene compared to over there, but it's it's great. You know, I, I love it. So I think it's home, and I think we both sort of feel like that. If that makes yeah, sense. and and also to build, building as much as you've built here as well. You know, going over there, you know, your fees are going to be nothing like they'll that you could do shows. So 35 shows over there, you know, equals you know, nothing compared to 35 shows over here. Yeah. Monetary-wise too, which makes a difference, you know. It, it does now. I mean, it does now, especially kids and all that stuff. And that's, yeah. that's part of life. And um, Absolutely. But, yeah, like I, when we, we both sort of came to that decision sort of after COVID and that and it all felt pretty natural and we were pretty happy with that, you know, like yeah. and um, we're really happy though with the team. Like it's been – we released Kids on Cassette with – with BMG here in Australia and the BBR there, it was it was like pretty tough going with COVID and and mm. just doing this and not being together. But it's been really nice to, to be dealing with um, the team here, especially BMG Australia this time around. We've been able to go in there, we've been able to be face to face with them, actually, you know, yep. talk about strategies and songs and what they think, and it, that's been really lovely. And they've got an incredible in the in the office BMG office in Sydney. They've got like an incredible music studio in the middle of the office. Yeah, yeah. Artists can go in and use, and it's like incredible. It's like state of the art, million dollar studio. So, um, yeah, it's been really. It feels really, really good. I feel like we found a good home there, and um, yeah, yeah. I just want to just keep. I just want to keep building it here. Honestly, I mean, this might seem it also sound cliche, but I'd love to be like. I'd love us to end up as like the. You think of Australian country music, you think of where one of the names you think of. Yeah, absolutely. Does I that make sense? Of, yeah, yeah, absolutely, mate. Absolutely. You know, and I hope that doesn't sound the hope doesn't sound arrogant. No, no, no. No, <laughs> no. I guess normal. that's probably one of the goals, you know? Yeah. Like like as you think of Australian country music here now, you you you're gonna say Lee or Troy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Liam or whatever. I'd love in the next twenty years, 10, 20 years, you go, Oh yeah, Australian country music, yeah, the Wolf Brothers are great. Such yeah, for sure. Great. Exactly. Yeah. So that's and that's it, kind of and you can lose down, that. Man. You can lose a little bit of that momentum too by because a lot of people always told me, you know, don't sacrifice what you've got here trying to chase something over there that's going to be uh, really, you know, really hard to achieve um, in the long run. So you sort of don't neglect your your Australian fan fan base to try and chase. You know, obviously the big international dream sort of thing. You know what I mean? So I've always I got to I got to the point I was going like, you know what? I'd, I'd have to, like you said, relocate, live over there for. For goodness knows how long, and and uh, and I'd, you know whether the family had come or I'd be backwards and forwards. I just went, you know what? I'm quite happy with the fan base that I got here, and I just can, I'd, I'd be really happy just to to keep building the fan base here and 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 see where I can build it to. Yeah, um, because I'm probably too old to be worrying about that. Me especially, you now you have actually damn sight younger than I am, but your sort of priorities change a little bit, and you go from that world dominance mentality to to you know what i'm 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 doing really good here and and i just want to maintain it here because it's 
it's not easy to maintain that either. You know what I mean? You, but, I mean, you're, you, you, you're, you'd also be like us. And I was like, you're, you're an Aussie bloke. You yeah, know, like I've, I've yeah, seen yeah. your socials. You're talking about yeah. putting your shed up and in your yeah, garden. Yeah. <laughs> like, imagine yeah. you living in a bloody apartment building in Nashville yeah. or LA. Yeah, you'd go yeah. insane. Absolutely, and, mate. and yeah, whether yeah. whether you wanted it to or not, it would affect your music. It would affect oh, your have, writing. Hundred percent. It, it yeah. affects the music that. Yep. The music that, and I think the music that people love from me, and Nick, is when we when it, it's more country, when it's honest, and when it's real, and it's about those things that we just talked about, which is yep. like come Whatever from me living to. on the farm, live Nick living where he lives, etc. So yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely. kind of my that's my take on it all, you know. No, no, I agree, mate, hundred percent. So, mate, who would be uh, like your dream collaboration if you guys were going to release a single with anyone? You um... <laughs> <laughs> bring that shit on. <laughs> Let's go. Dream, co- Let's go. dream collab. I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm. I don't know. I mean, I'd probably love like. Uh, I mean, I'd love to. I mean, I think just because of what he's done and achieved and. I think the influence he had in our career um, when we first started as a country rock band, I think Keith would be pretty special. Yeah, Keith Urban, absolutely. Of course. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember when we saw him on the, might have been the Golden Road album tour, you know, it would have been, geez, that would be like 20 years ago now, that album yep. tour. And that was that was very much like, oh, and I, well, especially what was happening here in Australia at mm-hmm. the time with the country music scene. To see Keith sort of come in and with his show and production, it was like, Oh wow, this yeah. is so cool! And he could, you know, what what we really appreciate, he could play, he could really mm. play a guitar, a, you know, amazing play, yeah. thing, you know. Yep. There's often you see guys who like stand there with a guitar, and it's like <laughs> the, band, <laughs> the band's in yeah. G, and they're <laughs> they're playing. I don't know what they're playing, you know. Yeah, or you know, the guitar's not even plugged in, or something like that. <laughs> the muso of me is always just like OCDs, kind of. Yeah, it makes me twitch, you know. <laughs> No, so, I know um, what you mean for sure. The, he would be really cool. Um, there's some really cool stuff happening. Like I don't know, country music. I feel like is in a bit of a boom at the moment. You'd probably yeah. agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tim, you'd well, probably yeah, agree with that too. Uh, it's I'd a mainstream imagine. genre now. I, I, don't I think, think it is. There's yeah, a, there's not a problem with the word anymore. No, which yeah. is wonderful. Which it's, absolutely it's not a problem. There's massive audience for the music. Um, and you just have to look at the number of people going to these major festivals, the streams. And, and that's the biggest thing too huge. is the, the amount of festivals that, that – 90% of them are all country festivals and, they, and there's just so many of them popping up. We, and I just <laughs> think they work so well. Um, like just coming back from COVID, I, I sort of noticed that the, the pub numbers were down but the festival numbers were up. So it was a really I'd, great – I don't know whether I'd people still were just saving up for them. Yeah. I'd still agree with that. And I think people yeah. – Probably feel a bit more comfortable, maybe, to be out in the open air. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Maybe. Yep. Um, well, they're saving up to get you know a, a few bands in, in in one in one night, if you know what I mean. Instead of instead of sort on. of chasing people around at different venues, you know what I mean. But I, I think the festival, bring them festivals on, keep them going, keep supporting them. I think they're they're the they're the way. They're much more fun <laughs> on our end anyway, because we get yeah, to catch up with each and other think, and we get to have I think fun. For, with the, them. for the punter too, it's a pretty, absolutely it's, it's a much pretty better, good yeah, deal. Yeah. You know, yeah, no, you I go, agree. Like as you said, let's do that gig of us, you, and Thirsty Merc. Like, yep. If I could go see all that in a absolutely in a paddock yeah, yeah, somewhere, yeah. you'd be like, yes, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yes, please. You I've know, got like, a paddock. I've got a paddock. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And I've got a. Sh- I've got a shed now too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, that's uh, great. I, when you put that, you put a photo up of that shed on social media, and I commented. Um, yeah. All Australian boys need a share, <laughs> yeah. which is a reference to a John Williamson John song. John Williamson song, yeah, yeah. And I thought you'll, you'll get that. it, you'll get Absolutely it. Absolutely did, yeah. They, no, they, heaps of these people were like replying to my comment and they didn't get it. And then someone was like, ah, it's a good song by John Williamson. I was like, yeah. <laughs> that was the first it. thing I thought of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, look, <laughs> I, I, think, I think that's right, you know, and I think um, I, I, I love the fest. I, I love the festivals. Like, I really yeah, do love it. the festivals. If you can go yeah. out and. Yeah, we've, like, we've been very lucky in the last couple of years. We got to play most of the major country festivals here, and includes yep. of CMC, Gimpy. We're going back to Gimpy this year. Yep. Um, so it's great, mate. It's really, really great. And I, and I think what we do to particularly works. You know, yeah. I think I think you know we can go out and do a sixty minute, ninety minute, whatever yep. type show. Yeah, yeah. It's yep. energy. It's fun. That's you know, right. Pun- Absolutely. Punters are going to have mate. a good time. 
yeah, about yeah. the show, buddy. Entertainment yeah, yeah. and all about the show, you know what I mean? Which just which which I try and do too, you know what I mean? Is just go and give everything, worry about tomorrow, tomorrow, and then just give everything you got that night and see how see where you land the next day, sort of thing, and deal with tomorrow, tomorrow, you know, but give yeah. everything you got that night. Hey, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um like I, I, I always ask these to people who've got a song that's like so iconic. Yeah. With them, you know, like mm-hmm. I, we did during COVID, we did a live stream and we had Ross Wilson on and I asked him about what does he like Eagle Rock? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you say? <laughs> he, he, he does. He does. Yeah. He really enjoys it because, you know, I mean, it's obviously probably paid for his house three times over, but, you know, like it's, <laughs> it was probably, interesting. Yeah. He sort of said, like, you know, sometimes we play it as a band so much live. We said we actually have to go back and listen to it to just yeah. to get back close to the original chord. So, like, my question for you is, like, Obviously, what about me is like associated with you, like yeah, yeah. Do you like it, or like has there been times when you've hated that song? Like- no, I'm really, really lucky, mate, with that one. Like because I've heard you know horror stories, you know, like about um, John Farnham refused to sing Sadie, you know, because he was that was synonymous with with his brand early in the piece. I think you know, obviously a different type of song. Sadie's about a cleaned lady, of course. But, <laughs> yeah. but um, yeah. I'm, mate, I'm, I've never had, I've never gone on an, on. on uh, uh, on stage and thought, oh, bloody hell, I have to sing What About Me Again. I just, yeah, yeah it's just, it never gets off for some reason. I'm really, really lucky, actually, because with, with that scenario happening, you know, so many people talking about it, you know, and me now pushing nearly 20 years, I suppose, doing this, I'm sort of getting towards that area of where where people uh, have sort of gotten past or, or moved on from, from you know, that one song that, that sort of everyone knows them for. But I mean, yeah. I, I, cause half the crowd sing the first verse and that now, and it's, it's just fabulous. I, 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 it never gets old and, and, and the, yeah, we just, we just really enjoy it. And, and it's just like, I can be doing a gig that's, I remember a couple of different festivals I've done where, you know, the people were a little bit unresponsive and, and probably, you know, I was not hundred percent suited to the bill or anything like that or, or things like that. And, but, as soon as you start, what about me? They all come running down the front, and, and it's yeah. just a great, great way to finish. Because I sort of believe in, you know, you've just got to tailor your show. So by the end of it, you're really hitting your straps, and and you're like, you've got you've got everyone in a position that you've worked so hard the whole set to get them into. Um, because when they leave that that uh, that festival grounds, they they're leaving with the last thing that they saw. In their minds, you know, with the fresh thing, which, which is which is that part of everyone singing along and everyone got their hands up and and just the whole place erupting, sort of thing, you know. So and it does that for us uh, at, at every gig, which I'm I'm so lucky for. I actually just cut a vocal on a um, a new um, a Gary Frost song. So twenty years in between, but he sent me another he sent me another song the other day. So I just well, cut a, I just cut a vocal on it a couple of days ago. So that's really exciting too. Well, that's really cool. What do the yeah. what do the guys think? Like who originally? Uh, oh, well, I recorded? think Gary Frost one time said um, in an interview they said, "Oh, so do you reckon you owe Shannon Hall a beer?" He said, "I don't own a beer. I own a bloody brewery." <laughs> 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 yeah, so I went here. Good on you, mate. Thank Noel you too. Shannon retirement fund has been very kind yeah. to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, I think you actually played before us on a big country. Well, yeah, I think I'm right at saying that. And yep. We were just, you know, it was two stages. Yeah. You were on one stage and we were on the other. We were just sort of getting ready and final bits, you know, guitars, tune, all that stuff. And he started What About Me? And I think we actually all sort of just walked to the front of our stage <laughs> and just sort of looked around. It was in, it was incredible. Like yeah, it was just electric. So and you're right, you you barely sung. You were just like. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. It's just an amazing way to, to finish every show, you know, because you always sort of finish the show with your biggest song and, I remember hearing a story about oh, it might have been Fergal Sharky or someone like that. I think Chuggy brought him out and he came out and sang the one big song he had straight up. He said, "Yeah, right." Chuggy said, "He went, what are you doing?" People yeah. started leaving after that. Yeah, so yeah. Was, you know, oh, that was good. Yeah, well, so to have, yeah. Thanks very much for coming and seeing that one song. But to, yeah, to have that and and have that up my sleeve every night, mate. I'm, yeah, absolutely blessed because it, it's all about. It's always been about the songs, and it, and and it always will be. I think be you know strictly just. Uh, wholly solely about about the songs, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Thanks for me asked that. I often, I often just wonder, like, with people yeah. who've got big, you know, I've got a big hit attached to them. Like, do they? Yeah, hate it? Because yeah. you hear stories of like, well, Van Morrison, for example, won't play, doesn't play Brown Eyed Girl. 
Yeah, really. Yeah, there it's you like, go. Just play it, man. Yeah, like, for I sure. mean, he's got a, he's got a few more than just brown eyed girl, but yeah, yeah. Geez, you know, <laughs> like, come on, you just yeah. end of the night. Thanks for coming. It's Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. If we're gonna yeah, go 100%. there, Tom. If we're gonna go there, Tom. Um, there's got to be a song you guys or you personally hate playing every night in a Wolf Boys show of our own. Yeah. Have you got one? The one. I can I can say that actually the one you mentioned before the 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 one good one off our first album the girl the bottle the memory that was our first number one Nick there was a period when Nick hated that like hated yeah, it right. and could could not play it yep um oh, the one I really always struggle with I don't know why actually we brought it back into the set for a, a couple of shows recently but we haven't played it it was the title of our third album this crazy life i don't know why it mm-hmm. just when we played i'd be like Ugh, i don't i don't know i don't know i can't even tell yeah, you yeah why. yeah it's funny isn't it it's crazy but, and then people would be like i love that's one of your best songs like, oh, i don't i don't, <laughs> I don't think <laughs> I it don't is i love it so much i don't i do <laughs> not think it is so i think that that's probably the ones for me but it's, yeah ironically some of the ones for us um I feel like our career has been a lot more of a bit of a like a just a constant build, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Slow like down. the one one for us that is actually the last was our most streamed song last year, even over songs that we put out, um, you know, new music we put out that got really high playlists and stuff. Was one beer at a time, which was off our second album, which is like an Irish rocky. I don't know where it came from, but um, yeah, that that seems to people seem to really really dig. Really, really yeah. dig that. So, yeah, hopefully someone like you will cover it one day and they can <laughs> buy me a brewery. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I have. I can help. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just buy oh. my Cascade back. I'll buy the Cascade Brewery back off Carlton. I'll be there right, you go. Absolutely. Right then, so. <laughs> So, uh, mate, well, now on to the, the, the last question, but the most the big question. The most interview. important question. So, and the, so, Tim, do you want to ask this question? <laughs> it's just, scared. Tom, swamp no, or potato cake? Golf or potato <laughs> cake, mate? It's a potato <laughs> cake, all right? Of course. I, 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 scallop, love the, I love the internet purely because, you know, you can do what we've just done and create a piece of art. 12 songs, you put your heart and soul in, you spend a, a house deposit making it, putting it together, you put it up, post, here's a new album, and it gets 12 comments and 300 likes, and then I sit there one morning watching Sunrise, and, <laughs> yeah, and it says Maccas are now doing potato scallops. I'm, while I'm sitting there having my cup of coffee, just very quickly go, oh, yeah, hey, guys, good morning. By the way, it's potato cake. Cheers. Not look at my phone for three hours, come back, and there's like two million <laughs> people reached, <laughs> yeah. and there's emails, and there's media outlets running stories. And I was like, yeah. oh, my God. Like, yeah. Tassie, Tassie, I think it's Tassie Victoria. Yeah, it is, I uh, think, yeah. A uh, uh, potato cake. Uh, maybe yep. Queensland. or maybe no, Queensland's scallop. scallop. Queensland, New Queensland South Wales, definitely scallop. Yeah, uh, <laughs> not sure where South Australia and Perth sit on this, but See, no, my question is: question, here's yeah. my question. How it's not a scallop? A scallop is a scallop. <laughs> this is my thing. <laughs> yeah, scallop is just like you want. Well, you can go to the fish it. and chip shop and get scallop and chips. Yeah, I, I always, I always sort of always thought it was because it was scalloped, so cut that way. Sure. Okay. Is that right? So here's, that, here's another make thing. Any sense? Tasmanians. We can have scallop potatoes, but that's kind of like a potato bake. Yeah, so but they're, they're sliced, but yeah, so Slice, potato sliced. cake is deep fried. <laughs> and here's—I'll yeah, give yeah. you another one. This is weird Tasmanian thing. <laughs> you guys know Devon, you know? Like yeah. Devon. yeah, yeah, yeah. Tasmanians tend to call that Belgium. Really? Yeah, I've never heard that before. Wow, it's pretty we weird. Oh, Devo sandwiches, mate. I had plenty yeah. of them growing up on the farm. Yeah, yeah no, I, well, I Belgium. clearly remember growing it's up going Belgian country. singer. Belgian, wow, well, I've never singer. even heard and of I've that. I've said that to my mates, you know, we go on the road and we laugh. I've got a Snapchat group with a bunch of country music mates, and and they're like, I love Devon. Someone put it having a Devon and Sanger one day. I was like, oh, that's <laughs> good. I was like, I'm gonna go get some Belgium, have a Belgian um, tomato sandwich. They're like, Belgium, they're like, wow. what's wrong with you? Yeah, <laughs> well, so, I've never heard that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's a new one. That's, that's the Tasmanian 
Yeah, sorry, don't judge me. I just <laughs> no, I'm not judging. I'm just no. going, I've never heard that. That's great. <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> there's, a few, there's a few things like that, mate. There's a few oh, things like that. That's, that's amazing. That's, 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 yeah. <laughs> We're, look, we've been cut off from the mainland down here. We've developed <laughs> our, own, our own stylings, our own tastes. Oh, own absolutely. Words. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, there you go. Eh? That's funny. Oh, well, mate, thank you so much uh, for being on the show. I really appreciate it. And and it's great to see you again, even though, even though it's over, uh, over Zoom, mate. And, uh, yeah, you, I, I've got a lot of time for you, you and Nick, mate. I'm good mates with both of you. So it's great to see you guys doing so well. I've been a big fan since, um, since you came on the scene as well. So, Good luck with the future. Guys, everybody out there, go and check out the new album, Living the Dream by the Wolf Brothers. You won't be disappointed. It's an absolute river. Thanks so much, buddy. I really appreciate it. Mate, thank you for the kind words, and and it goes both ways. Me and Nick love Absolutely. you and whatever, anything we can do for you and your family, you know, and same for you. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. Yep. Good, like good people. Good, mutual, good to have good people. So thank you. That's Thanks exactly right. Good on you, brother. Thanks, mate. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, if you enjoyed today's show, please uh, like and follow this podcast on iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast and give the show a rating. We look forward to your company. Thanks very much, Tim. We'll see you next time.